If you are experiencing a separation or a divorce in your marriage, then one of the hardest things that you have to face is telling the children. And this is not a subject to take lightly. And we have some tips that we're gonna share with you today on how to talk to the children about what's happening in the best way possible. Welcome to today's Relationship Radio episode. I am joined today by Dr. Joe Beam. Glad to be here. Welcome. Soon to be Dr. Holmes. Yes. Good. Now that we've said that so many times, I have to finish You my have PhD. to. There's no way around it. No now. matter how frustrating my statistics class exactly. gets. Exactly. <sighs> Remember we'll what Will Rogers, the famous uh, humorist, said well before you ever lived. He said that there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and, and statistics. <laughs> so just remember that. I will. Okay. I will remember. All right. So today we're talking about how to tell my kids my spouse is leaving or how to tell the kids we're separating or divorcing. Heartbreaking conversations no parent ever wants to have to have. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, sometimes. Yeah. And not just about divorce, but about separation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes one or uh, or the other spouse, of course, will move out. Like the husband's like, I'm going to get my own apartment. Actually, sometimes it's the wife. I'm going to go get my own apartment. And here you have children. And the way to tell them is going to depend on how old they are. And actually, it's going to be affected by whose children they are. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you are a, uh, a family where that some of the children are biologically his and or some of the children are biologically hers, and then maybe there's even some that, that they have together, that can actually alter the way you do it as well. So it's based on the age of the children, the mixture of the children when it comes to who is the biological parent. But if you're gonna do it, we have some definite suggestions about how. Okay, so how? <laughs> okay. Let's dive in. The first thing, and this is the best way, if you can make this happen, this is the best way to do it. The spouse who is leaving should be asked by the spouse who's going to keep their kids, the ones who are going to live with, and then say, okay, the two of us together need to sit down with our children and tell them what's going on, and we need to make it age appropriate. Now, in just a minute, we'll talk about, well, what if my spouse won't agree to do that? But right now, let's say that he or she will. You're going to make some ground rules up front, and the ground rules would include such things as neither one of us is gonna say anything negative about the other in front of our children, not just in this discussion, but ever. Now, sometimes the children might have some negative things to say, and if the child does have something negative to say, we're gonna listen and try to understand, but we are not going to feed into the brain of the other child bad things about their mom or their dad. We're not gonna do that. The second ground rule would be we're going to tell them the truth Based on age, in other words, you don't tell the same thing to a four-year-old that you tell to a 14-year-old, based on age and based on whether the truth we share would create a visual. Because you do not want to create a visual in the mind of your child about what one or, or both of you are doing. I'll explain more about that in another minute. And so when you get those kind of ground rules up front, Oh, and we're going to be calm. Nobody's going to get hysteric. Nobody's going to get upset. We're not going to weep and cry. We're going to present a strong face to our children. And so together, we're going to sit down with the kids at a time when there's nothing else interfering. TV's off, cell phones are off, etc. And the spouse who is leaving should be the one who says to the children, I'm going. Now, explain enough that they know it's not their fault, mm -hmm. but not so much that they hear either something negative about their other parent or that they start having a visual about something you're doing that's going to terribly upset them. And so it could be something like this. Uh, Mom and I have hit a rough patch. And we feel, if that's not right, honest, then say, I feel. I feel that it's time that for a while I need to live someplace else. I want you to know I still love you and, and that there's nothing in my world more important to me than you are. So understand that. This is a decision I've made based on a relationship with your mom or with your dad. And, and it's not having to do with anything that we're unhappy about with you. And so you make that very clear and very obvious. Now, then you have to be ready to answer their questions. And both of you have to answer honestly. Again, being careful not to throw the other person under the bus. And so if uh, say the 14-year-old looks at you and says, is there someone else? Well, we recommend that you tell the truth. 
And the reason we recommend that is because if you lie, no, no, there's nobody else at all. Understand that you'll never be able to control what it is that your 14 year old is going to hear from other people, the kind of things they're going to discover, the kind of things they are going to find out. And the last thing you want to happen right now is for that child to believe that you have just blatantly to their face lied. And so if there is someone else, you can say, well, yes, right now I'm sorting through some things and it doesn't involve another person. And so you answer honestly, you understand, but without creating a visible or a, something that they can see in their own mind. And so if she says, well, then have you been sleeping with that woman? Then you would answer that 14 year old, whatever the age appropriate is, you'd answer by saying, you know, that's not really appropriate to talk about right now. Right now, let's just talk about how much I love you, how much your other parent loves you, and, and how we're going to arrange things living-wise so that everybody's taken care of. And so you don't answer those questions. You don't get angry like, how dare you ask me a question like that? Not good. You're going to answer it gently and warmly, but you're not going to answer it by giving them something they're going to be seeing in their mind. You don't want that to happen because that's going to be bad. Now, the other part of that honesty is they may turn and look at the other spouse and say, or other parent, I should say, and say, uh, how do you feel about this? Well, tell the truth. If it's like, well, I'm in favor of it, I think it's a good idea, your mom should leave. If that's what you feel, then you say that. But don't say anything negative about mom in the process. It's probably going to be more likely the other way, though, where it's going to be, well, I wish that it hadn't come to this. I still hope that some way we could find out to I find a way to somehow resolve this issue. If that's the truth, then tell them that. But both of you then need to reassure the children, not only of how much you love them, but how many things in their lives you're going to try to keep the same mm -hmm. because they fear change. Everybody fears change, particularly unknown change. And so it's like, this is what we're going to do to try to not upset the lifestyle that you have now. We're going to be doing this and this and this and this. And those, of course, then need to be things you have talked about earlier. So, Kimberly, I went through about five minutes there, kind of a long ramp, uh, rant mm -hmm. on that, if you will. Mm -hmm. That's not a rant. It was kind of explanation. a long explanation of that. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think about what I've said so far? So I, I would just make sure that the audience understands that on that front end is making that plan of what are we going to tell the children stays the same in their life? And what are we going to tell them about? what changes to expect and following through. I know that happens afterward, but make sure that what you say is going to stay the same. Yes. That you actually can do. If you say, I'm going to take them to dinner every single Friday, you better be there every, yeah, every single, single Friday. Friday. Yes. Okay. So all of that is kind of what to, what to do before the conversation. And then you said, who should tell the, the spouse that's leaving. Now, Ideally. again, we're going to be talking about in a minute what happens if that spouse has already left or if that or spouse refuses to do it. Mm -hmm. But the spouse that is leaving should be the one that tells. There can be a little caveat to that based on biological children. And so if, if the biological children of him and the biological children that are hers get along with each other fairly well, then I would still suggest the spouse that's leaving till everybody all at the same time. If there's some kind of division among those children, they don't get along with each other very well, et cetera, then I would suggest that, the bi that still they do it together, if at all possible, but that the biological uh, parent would be the one because he or she has a closer relationship in all likelihood. Now, sometimes the non-biological parent actually has a closer relationship, and in that case, it would be that person. But it's a matter of trying to think about them. And if you're thinking, well, we're going to tell our children one at a time, my recommendation would be, if at all possible, do it all at one time with everybody so they all hear the same thing. So that later they're not arguing among, no, they said this, no, they said that. And you do it all at one time. And so, yes, if, and, if, and if whatever you say you're going to do, you have to do. So did you hear? Be honest, but don't paint pictures in their brain. Did you hear, don't do anything that sounds anything negative at all about your spouse, but still be honest and, and make it age appropriate. You're going to really, as, and I'm running this into the ground a little bit, but you're going to do it differently with a four-year-old and a 14-year-old. Now, you might be thinking, well, what if my children are grown? I would still recommend, if at all possible, you get them in the same room at the same time and you tell them. And again, the spouse who is leaving because it still affects them. Even if they're grown, married, and have their own children, it still affects them. And it's still better not to do it one at a time, but to have them all together. 
Now, the last part of that then is this, and I've said it already, but I'm going to repeat it because it's so important. Answer their questions honestly, but avoid getting any visuals. But be as honest as you possibly can. And if they get upset, if they say something mean or angry or nasty to either one of you, which sometimes children will do because they're hurt, do not react in kind. Just say, I understand. I can see how you feel that way. I'm sorry that what I'm doing or what we're doing is causing you pain and continue to support each other. Don't run the other one down in front of the kids. Please don't do that. Okay. So a couple of clarifying questions. You said age appropriate answers to questions, but what if they have children ranging from four years old to 23 years old? If if it's that big of a division, then you are going to have to do it not in one group. Because they're just not going to have any way to understand that similarly. That's actually a very good question. And then another one is, what if your spouse won't agree to the ground rules? Okay. Then you tell them, okay, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to do it, if you're not either not going to be there or you're not going to do it by the ground rules we've agreed on, then I myself am going to tell them. Now, it would be so much better if you were there because they're going to have questions for you and they want to be able to say things to you. And so for the sake of the children, Please agree to these ground rules. Now, you can't go in there and say you're leaving me because you think I'm some terrible, evil, wicked witch. That's not a good thing for the kids. But if we go in there with this united front, demonstrating understanding and not kindness, I'll even use the word love toward each other in that sense, then the kids need that. And if the spouse won't do that, then say, okay, well, I'm going to do that. But understand that they're going to feel probably cheated because they can't ask you questions, because they can't look in your face, they can't look in your eyes, and they really need that. And I do promise you this, if I'm the one that has to tell them and you're not there, I will still honor that I'm not going to throw you under the bus. I'm not going to say negative things about you. And I'm not going to be able to answer questions for you. So if the 14-year-old says, is dad involved with somebody else, or is mom involved with somebody else, uh, I'm going to answer by saying, you'll have to ask your father that or ask your mother that I'm not going to answer your questions for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what other questions you have there about this? Yeah. The, this is not a question. It's a comment. Okay. Never make the kids choose. Never. Mm -hmm. Actually, we had a person in one of our workshops years ago who said that he was part of a good sized country family. And he was about my age. So this guy been around a while. And, uh, so he, when he was five years old. They lived in a country home. They were farmers. He said uh, there were like six or seven siblings all together. And mom and dad took him out into the front yard. And dad walked over to one side of the yard. Mom walked to the other side of the yard. And they said, we're splitting up. Choose. Mm. And so the kids had to decide who to walk to, mom or to dad. Some walked to dad. Some walked to mom. He said, I was five. Oh my I was five years old when that happened. And I remember it just as vividly now as I did the day it occurred because I had no idea what to do. Heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Don't make the kids choose. Amen and amen. Yeah. Give some, can you give some examples of negatives? So th- you gave an example of how to do it the right way, but what is an example of the wrong way? And let's use an example that doesn't involve an affair. Okay. You can say, well, a negative would be, I'm having to leave and we're going to leave dad because dad's just too controlling. He thinks he's my, my boss. Mm-hmm. That's a negative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you're not going to be saying anything negative about the spouse in any shape, fashion, or form. Like, I can't live with that woman anymore. Have you seen the way she treats me? Mm-hmm. Have you heard the way she talks to me? Mm-hmm. Anything. And, and don't think you can sneak it by like, you know, your mom is really a good woman, except for the fact that she's just so hard to live with. Mm-hmm. Don't try to sneak it by there either. Mm-hmm. Okay. Understand, this is my mom or my dad. I'm the kid. Right. And anything you do that negates my relationship with that person is damaging me. Mm-hmm. Yet we know, Kimberly, sometimes parents do it on purpose. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bash your dad, hoping that you never, ever care about him again in your life. I'm going to bash your mom, hoping that you never, ever care about her again as long as you mm-hmm. live. And if, if you think that's somehow punishing your spouse, you're right. It is. Mm-hmm. But it's the child who's punished the most. Yep. Even if they buy into everything that you say and become your biggest loyal friend, that kind of stuff, Still, you have cheated that child, your child, out of something that he or she deserves. 
Oh, and that's the final thing, Kimberly. After this thing is over, don't make your child your therapist. Mm -hmm. It's just not the right thing to do. They don't deserve to go through that. Mm -mm. And therapy is called triangulation. When you bring a child as in part, basically when the child becomes a third part of the marriage relationship and they become the one you go to for issues or for venting, you've triangulated them and put them in a position they don't deserve or know how to be a part of. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this is really good. Uh, a final end note that I would give is especially for dads, because that's the research that, that mm -hmm. I have seen yeah. is one year after a divorce occurs specifically in this research, 25% of fathers are absent in their children's lives. They have little to nothing to do with their children. And that number grows up to 50% over time. 50%. And that's why it's so important that when you're having these conversations and saying the things that you promise to do, you have to do it. Because otherwise it starts a perpetual cycle of hurt and heartbreak in these children's lives. And they don't deserve it. No. They don't deserve it. They don't. No one wants to have this conversation, but whether you want the divorce or not, it's a consequence of it. And even separation. Yeah. It, the kids even still deserve separation. it because the less they have to fear mm. and, and fearing the unknown can be devastating. Mm -hmm. So the less they have the fear, the better off they're going to be. And, and it's part of your responsibility to protect them and take care of them as much as you can. So what is a, happy note, a moment of hope we can end with on a heavy topic. I would say that you want to love your children, not just in your heart, but in a way where they feel it in their heart. Mm. It's not just what you feel for them, it's how they receive it. So demonstrate it clearly. Go overboard if you need to. Now, I'm not talking about in some crazy, insane way, but make sure they know that you love them and that you're there for them. Mm. That's good. We hope that this episode has given you tactical, practical tools that you can use to have a difficult conversation, but to do it in the best way possible for the best possible outcome. If you appreciate what we are doing on Relationship Radio, please leave us a five-star review. That is the best gift that you can give us. And if you are looking to still save your marriage, even when facing separation mm -hmm. or divorce, mm -hmm. We can help. That's right. Go to marriagehelper.com. You can see the workshops we do that have over a 70% success rate at saving marriages and other courses that we can offer you that you can get started with today. So go visit us there at marriagehelper.com. And until next week, thank you, Dr. Joe. Mm, thank you, Kimberly.